Welcome back to WRPL. It's the podcast where we're talking about all the things we're watching, reading, playing, and listening to. My name's Ben. And I'm Steve. What's up, Steve? Not much, Ben. Uh, excited to be back in into my basement uh, <laughs> with you uh, to talk about what's been going on this week. Yeah, uh, not a huge week. There, we, we got some stuff, but there's not like crazy things to talk about but we're going to talk about red one we're going to talk about honora uh the penguin season finale uh so there's there's things there's things things. uh let's start with a roll five boo that was a terrible roll on your part i know i don't mean the like the number yeah yeah no i just i didn't want it to go flying everywhere (laughs) just a pathetic roll but here we go yeah 15. Okay. Put it together. Got it All right. I'll take it. Okay, so I kind of, I don't really have any news or trailers or nothing like that, but I want to, I want to start with some food. Okay. So first one's a weird one. Have you ever heard of Cafe at Nordstrom? <laughs> can't say that I have. In the Nordstrom in the mall, there is an e-bar which has like pastries and um, coffee and stuff like that. But if you go to their second floor, they have a full What's blown e-bar. I don't know why it's called an e-bar. Maybe it's supposed to be like come here and play on your laptop and, and do the Starbucks thing. Oh, OK. You know? But they serve coffee and, and stuff like that. That makes sense. But upstairs is like a full blown restaurant, like in the middle of all the other clothing and stuff it's so out of place it's so weird if if my roommate didn't take me there i would have had no idea it existed not a huge menu but a little little upper scale at least and and uh, i would think so I, but see being in a department store not even in the mall yeah. makes it seem like this should be trash yeah but it presents itself very nicely well, I had the French dip, and I got to say, it was one of the best fucking French dips I've ever really? had. It was amazing. It was so good. Tender, juicy. The bread was not not too dry, not too soft. It was amazing. And I highly recommend, if you could go to a cafe at Nordstrom, fucking do it. I mean, I, I think that maybe you should try some other things on the menu before you just say i had one thing so i highly recommend okay if you want a french dip because there was a lot (laughs) most of the stuff on there i probably wouldn't get there was a lot of uh, seafood and things and i don't eat seafood but if you like french dips go the nordstrom cafe or cafe at nordstrom i want to be uh second food thing can I ask, like, what the visual sure. aesthetic was? I don't know. It was like, just generic? Like, it was pretty generic, classic. Uh, hotel lobby, you know? Got it. <laughs> like okay. a hotel restaurant, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing. They don't have a theme. It's not like Eye of Sauron Cheesecake Factory yeah, or yeah, nothing yeah. like that. <laughs> uh, second thing that I ate, uh, I eat a lot of Burger King, unfortunately. Um, they have three new Whoppers. They had a, a contest last year of, like, win a million dollars. The build your own Whopper sort of thing. I my entry, are they still doing the uh, the Wednesday Adams Family Burger? They have them until they're out of the buns. They said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, my suggestion was uh, regular, you know, Whopper patty, Swiss cheese, mustard, pickles, and pastrami. This was a sandwich that uh, Carl's Jr. had many many years ago, and it was so damn good. I ate it like daily. I actually felt my clothes get tighter on me <laughs> it, and they never brought it back. It was like a one and done sort of thing. So that was, that was my suggestion. They didn't pick it. I didn't win the million dollars, Darn. but, but they have three new ones. I've tried two of them. The one I haven't tried is the Mexican street corn. And it's mm. got like a, a corn salsa oh, yeah. and some uh, queso on it. Uh, the, I'll probably try that Monday. Um, the other one I had was like a mesquite barbecue with fried jalapeno and, uh, uh um, what's the, like the sweet bacon, Hick- um, what is that called? Maple bourbon bacon, uh, okay. maple bourbon bacon. And that one's pretty good. You know, the Burger King's big thing they always do is just throw some jalapenos, throw some bacon on it, call it a Texas Whopper and you're done. <laughs> uh, but at least it. They tried something different yeah. with it. I, I really good. do love a good sweet and spicy combo. <laughs> Hell so. yeah. And then they had the fried pickle ranch whopper. So it's got like a some sort of white cheese, fried pickle strings, and ranch and lettuce. Pretty basic. And then you could get the fried pickles as like pickle fries. Yeah. 
This is one of the nastiest things I've ever eaten in a fast food place. These, I love fried pickles, but these tasted like microwave slugs. The texture <laughs> was atrocious. Like all the batter slid right off and it just, it didn't have the, the, the zest of a pickle or any sort of crispness to it. It was nasty. I, I scraped them off the burger. I couldn't eat them. Now I didn't eat the fries on their own. They could be better by that and like i think they would need to be like double fried or something but this was absolutely disgusting and everybody who worked at the burger king were like don't get it man it's nasty but they were all not big pickle eaters i'm a <laughs> i'm a big pickle guy like i i drink the pickle juice out of the jar when i'm done with my pickles i love pickles so much i get extra pickles on pretty much every burger i get this How thing you ever drank like pickle shots or pickle vodkas together i mean i would i just don't really want to pay for it no, I mean we could have just done matter. it, done it at home. Done you know, yeah, I mean, sure, but I don't always keep pickles in the house because when I do, I get like a big jar of it, and they're like sliced right down the middle, and I'll eat one a day, and that's too much sodium for someone to be eating. Uh, so I generally don't keep them in the house because uh, that's bad for you. You have but a problem. Don't eat the pickle fry burger at Burger King. Is absolutely atrocious. Good to know. All right. Uh, the other things we've consumed, non-food consuming. Uh, I'll go real quick because you don't have anything besides our main topics, right? I have one thing. Okay. I will do one thing real quick. Uh, I just want to say Silo is back, season two. I love this show so much. Uh, you know, read all the books instantly after season one was done. Uh, Apple is great with their science fiction. They have For All Mankind. They have Severance. They have Foundation. Foundation. Thank you. They just they kill it with their sci-fi. And who doesn't like Rebecca Ferguson? She's I don't know. I don't want to call her America's sweetheart, but you know she does seem like one of those. Uh, She's also English. Is she? Pretty sure. Huh. Those damn Brits. They really can fool you. Anywho, uh, yeah, Silo Season 2, only one episode out so far. I'm in, I'm enjoying it. I kind of regret reading the books just because now I don't have the anticipation of what's coming next, uh, like I did with Season 1, but they changed enough from Season 1 that I'm sure I'll have plenty of surprises. What do you got, Steve? Hmm. She's actually Swedish. Oh, okay, so she's not a Brit. That's good. She's not a Brit, yeah. Uh... What do I got? I have, I finished a book. Mm. I finished the green. Uh, sorry, uh, Jade City by Jade City. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys, it's a joke. Uh, Jade City by Fonda Lee, book one of the Green Bone Saga. It is uh, basically pitched as the Godfather uh, meets uh, like a uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, or something okay. like that. So oh, I think you mentioned this on an episode that. Either you had started it or you were uh, going to read it, yeah, but that yeah. sounds familiar. But now I've actually finished book one. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of praise around this book, um, saying it was really good, and uh, I'd agree. I, I really like this book. Uh, if you like uh, family drama, crime stories, it's very kind of slow burn. Um, there, so the the there's magic in this world, uh, but like only people from uh this island and only certain people on the island can kind of wield jade uh jade is mined on this island and it gives them magical abilities um and by magical abilities they're not like shooting fire they don't have powers of the elements it just makes them like kind of like stronger and faster and they can sense other people who have it um there's other abilities that they don't really like do a deep dive into there's no explanation as to like why a certain group of people can uh, use it and other people can't. Some people can touch it without any effects because this magic also, like if you if you don't have the right um, biology or whatever, um, some people who like can't wield it properly will just take it and it, like it gives them a sensation and then they get like itches. So it be kind of kind of becomes like a drug addict thing. Hmm. Um, but I won't bog you down with all that. Um, but it's this is the story of um, this this family, the Call family, and they run the No Peak uh, clan, and they're kind of like just the major crime syndicate of uh, 
this this city on this island there's basically two main clans another like smaller like sub sub clans um and their biggest enemy is the mountain clan and they've kind of lived in relative peace for a while um but uh things begin to happen and then they basically go to war with the rival clan and the streets run rampant with blood and violence and it's all kind of fall on the shoulders of this um uh, new they call him the pillar he's like the head of the clan he's uh the youngest one to ever do it he's like i think 29 or something i don't remember his age um so it's just uh his his father's dead and so it's on to him and now he has to run this clan um and there's some some twists in it you have the sister who mm-hmm. like left and went to like white people land <laughs> um because none with of this, rebecca ferguson in rebecca ferguson's <laughs> character yeah no no um and so she comes back to uh, her family and, you know, their family's just like, hey, there's a place for you here if they if you want. And she's like, no, I don't want to be part of this clan shit. But like, will the, you know, will she be forced back in or will she not? Um, but it's all very, very well written. Um, it's not super like kung fu heavy, but this is like the early stages. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed it from, I, don't, I haven't read like a ton of, crime novels but everything uh i was worried that some of the um translations of things like i wouldn't understand especially being like a made-up world but this is a i wasn't sure if i'd follow like who the characters were or like maybe they'll name something i was like i don't even know what the fuck that is because it maybe have some like real sort of kind of chinese origin to it or something mm-hmm. like that but you can follow everything it's all very simple it's nothing uh outrageous they kind of explain like why everything exists uh like why traditions make people do this and that and it's never like crazy or you're like i I don't understand what's going on um is there only three books in this series there's three books and i think a novella um and i think i've been told that like each book actually gets better and better um and i don't know if there's more gonna continue but i know this the three is you know one full contained story uh and the other upside is like a lot of the fantasy I've been reading lately is just kind of, you know, swords and sorcery mm. and, you know, and castles and all that stuff. This is kind of like, uh, I'd say 1970s, uh, oh, okay. 60s or whatever. Interesting. Um, cause there's guns and telephones and cars. And, I mean, there's no internet. As far as I can tell, there's no cell phones. Uh, <clears throat> So it's all very like a modern take on like what if uh, the triads had magical abilities and now they have to like uh, run this the the island that they're on which is kind of I guess Japanese inspired or whatever and then um, but there is outside forces uh, that seem to be like they're going to come into play in later books. Okay. Um, so. The white people. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's really, really good, and I recommend it. All right. Uh, I'll do one real quick before we get to our top three things. Uh, I've been watching a show called High Potential with uh, Caitlin Olsen and Taryn Killam. I say with Taryn Killam. He, she, uh, he's her ex-husband, uh, and he's in most episodes, but he's not a big part. He's more like okay. he stays at home with the kids. But High Potential is pretty much uh, Caitlin Olsen. It was a, a janitor at a police station. She knocked over a file, saw that they made a mistake, corrected their mistake, and then went about her their uh, went about her day. And then they come in like, "How did you know this?" And of course, she's like a House or a Sherlock. She just she knows everything about everything because she a watched the will. documentary. A what? A goodwill. Yes. A will hunting, you mean? I, yeah, okay. I know it's real, man. <laughs> um, and you know, it's always I stay up late because I can't sleep, and I saw a documentary about pillows, and I understand how tassels work, and you know, like which way churches face it, and, and all these things. Um, so it must be a really easy show to write because you could just say yada yada yada. I know this stuff, and you you create whatever mystery you want, and you just solve it however you want. It it it's it's pretty basic and um but i'm enjoying it because caitlin olsen is just like 
infinitely charming. Mm-hmm. Uh, she joins the team. You know, she's got that kind of uptight partner who you're just a civilian. You shouldn't be working here with us, but you know, proves him wrong time and time again. Like he's a good cop as well, but she just, she always is one step ahead of him. So in this show, is she kind of more the character from that, uh, champions movie, which is like kind of, a, she's actually like a good person and sweet yeah. and nice. She's not brash and abrasive. No. And I mean, like, she is, ah, she is a know, little because it's D. Like, she, yeah, she's not D, but she does kind of – she'll get into someone's face because she knows right. She knows they're wrong. She's right, and she's going to be a stick in the mud about it. She has three kids, and one of the, the plot points is she has an, an oldest daughter with her first husband who went out for diapers and never came home. And the cop said, he ran off on you. Tough shit. And she's like, he's not that type of person. Something happened. So part of her deal of working with the cops is – you're going to help me solve this case. And so her police chief who really believes in her is finding out stuff little by little. Um, And then she got married to Taryn Killam and had two more kids. Uh, One's like a baby and the other one's also super smart, just like her, but he's like eight, you know, Mm. Uh, but they're, they're background characters. Um, Shows on its hiatus right now. It had the weirdest schedule. It it premiered, then it took a week off, then it had like four episodes in a row, then another week off, then this like mid season finale, and then it won't be back until January. Like they, it's like, do you want to not gain a following by having such an erratic schedule? But uh, I I like it because I like these shows. You know, they always show the crime at the beginning, and I always try to you know figure it out. A lot of these, you can't figure it out on your own. She just pulls some bullshit out of her ass at the very end and then goes, ha I knew this the whole time, even though it was something we never, ever talked about this entire episode. But there was one where I nailed it from the first, like, two minutes. I was like, this is how the person died, and I was fucking right. I'm just as good as her. Um, it's actually, <laughs> this is a, it's a remake of, I believe, a French show called... Um, high Potential. Well, it's like H-I-P, High intelligence person oh, something okay. like that that's fine and um the, the my biggest thing i hate about this is she dresses like a hooker like a stereotypical hooker like cheetah mini skirt mm-hmm. with a, a a zebra top and a big fur pink fur coat and it's like you're a mom of three you're in you're almost 50 why are you dressed like this? And it's not every episode that she's as extreme, but she has such like just a, a wacky sense of style. And it's and that's what is one of the things that are taken from the, the French show. Um, I think they should have cut that. It just it doesn't work. It mm. she looks like a prostitute in this show. But gotcha. but fun. It's on Hulu every Wednesday, so yeah. I'd say Is it a I Zoom thirty minute comedy or no? It's an hour. Oh, it's an hour. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Like like a lot of cop procedurals. Sure, but right. you know it is fun. All right, let's uh, let's do let's do some penguin. The penguin finally came to. I say finally, like ugh, I had to really like torture myself to get through this. But the the thing the the penguin. Jesus Christ! The penguin. Top take two <laughs> and action. <sighs> The Penguin had its first and maybe only season come to an end this past Sunday. Eight episodes based off the Matt Reeves, the Batman universe. Uh, This show fucking rules. It's great. There's not a bad episode. There's not a bad performance. It nails the, the, the ending. If there isn't another one, I'm perfectly fine with that. I think this is one of the best shows of the year. Okay. You? <laughs> <laughs> that's, come on, Steve. It's back and forth. I don't I don't need to cue you up. No, I know. Uh, just get my thoughts together. Yeah, I mean, I liked the show. It was nice. Ha- I didn't... It's been a while since I feel like I really had, um, like, a show that I was just watching week to week. And, you know, it was just like... Show again. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's been off for months now. I know, but it's still this year. Well, yeah, but a, a while for me is different than a it, while for other people. Anyway... <laughs> Um, so it was nice having that regular weekly watch. Uh, but by the end, I recognize that this show was good. Um, I just, I, I don't think I'm as blown away as everybody else. I think, uh, the two main leads, they're great throughout it. Um, it's fun seeing Colin Farrell do this character. Mm-hmm. And I like this interpretation. Uh, 
you know, really grounds him in a, in a real world. Um, but my major problem with the show is like, I don't think I'd care if it wasn't set in the Batman world. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it'd be better outside of it, or if it would just feel like kind of cliche or another gangster just, show. Yeah. It, it just, it, it's trying to, it, cause I think it'd be like, Oh, it's trying to be the Sopranos, but it's not nearly as good. So we're going to mm-hmm. write it off. But because it's like, in the Batman universe, we go, well, it's not trying to be The Sopranos. It's trying to be a gangster show in Gotham, mm-hmm. um, which I appreciate that they, you know, here's a story in the Batman universe that, like, doesn't require Batman. That's still good. Uh, that being said, uh, I I don't know. It's just something about the show I can't quite put, you know, uh, to explain as to why I didn't love it. Um, I think this is insane. This is yeah, I, 100% I one of the best things. You, I, I agree that it's probably one of the better shows I've seen this year, but this, at the same time, like maybe I just haven't seen a ton of shit. Like most of the stuff I'm watching is just kind of uh, like comedy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, up against Shogun, I, you know, I don't think the show is nearly as good as that, but I don't think the show's bad or does anything like wrong. I just wasn't all that interested i think i the back half i liked a lot more like yeah. i think from her origin episode mm-hmm. on i got so more that's like episode it. four so you're saying the first three were a little slow then the last I'm five are great slow. i'm just saying like it didn't grab me like it seemed to grab everyone else immediately um and by the end i don't think it uh you know for me personally it just didn't change the game for me so i think that's crazy because like you follow oz this whole time and you you're rooting for him. He, you know, he's an ugly dude who only wants to please his mother and had as as a tragic backstory with uh, his his brothers. And then as it goes on, you learn, don't be rooting for this guy. This guy's an absolute monster. No, don't feel bad. You know that he lost his brothers. He killed his brothers. Oh, don't don't feel bad for his mom. His mom hates his fucking guts. Like, and it, it, it's just like with Sophia, you think, oh, she's the hangman. She's a crazy person. Absolutely not. She was just a normal person who gets fucked over by her dad and, and becomes kind of like a crazy person as, mm-hmm. as time goes on. I, I think like Shogun is amazing, but I don't know if I would ever watch Shogun again. I'd rewatch the penguin now having the context of knowing exactly where he ends up and why everything happens seeing it from the beginning is going to like change my, my perspective on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think if you did take out the Batman stuff, which is, it's very little, it's just names. If, if he was, if he was called like the hippo because you know, he's a big fat guy or whatever. And you take out the word Gotham and Falcons and Maroney's, sure. it would still be a really good show. I think yeah. they, they, like no. it's a, I agree. it's still a good crime show. And I, I don't really care for, I just don't think it would have got people in Probably not. No, you without know. the IP, which is, and then I think what people. I'm not saying people stayed tuned to see Batman. I don't think anyone really expect. No. I'm sure there's some people who hope to. see I mean, something. everybody's like, "Well, where is he? Like, they blew up half the sewers, and 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 Batman doesn't show up." My my head cannon for this was, you know, at the end of the Batman, he like drives off with Selena because she's gonna go to Europe or something. Mm-hmm. He just went with her. He just took a year off and he went and they banged all around Europe. They stopped some crime or whatever. And he's just getting back. When you see that bat signal at the very end, that's him just coming back. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, like the first movie they have so much of Batman puts fear into the criminals of not wanting to be out on the street at night. And you don't get any any of that in this. And I'll just I like to think he took some time off and they kind of got over Batman. I think for me also, like tonally, I think it felt kind of weird because it kind of felt like the show existed in a sort of PG-13 world that's like, I have to kind of fit into the film, but we can drop as many like fucks as we want. Okay. Because there there's plenty of harsh language, but, and maybe I'm just forgetting some things other than like the first, ep- was it the first episode with, with like the, the wire? The arm, yeah. There was, there was like no crazy violence. And I'm not saying I needed to tell a good story. I'm just saying for a crime show, that's typically things that they lean into. Sure. Um, or, or There was enough violence, but it's more like people getting shot. Violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and also, 
I, I liked overall the relationship between uh, Oz and, and Vic. And Vic. Um, I mean, the second they made, like, you find out he's uh, got, like, a star and everything, I was like, this kid's fucking dead. He's not mm-hmm. making it through this season. You don't make, like, the sweet, adorable character go down this road. Well, there's two ways you could go. Either, you're like, he's going to become the worst version of himself, or he's going to he's gonna die at the end, yeah. because he's the character who, like, the audience loves no matter what. Because mm-hmm. he's the, the sweet, yeah. uh, adorable one with a disability or whatever. Yep. Um so I'm glad they killed him because it just made me right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... I don't think anybody was surprised that he died. No. It's just by the time we get to the end, you think uh, – because I, I always imagine it more like a Green Goblin situation. Mm-hmm. You know, someone is holding – Sophia is holding his mom and Vic at, at the ed- edge of, of a cliff and he just like lets Vic die to yeah. save his mom. That's mm-hmm. I figured how, that's how it was going to go. But since mom's safe, quote unquote safe – uh, Sophia's gone. He's in control of everything. They did it. They won. The threat's over. And for him to just be like, sorry, bro. Thanks. Thanks for everything. And then just with his mask, just choking him out right then and there. It's It was such a, a cruel way to go where I don't think anybody saw him going out that way. Mm-hmm. And what a piece of shit. Like, he saved your fucking life. Like, he could have gone to California with his girlfriend, and 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 he saved you and Sophia. It would have been the Maronis running all of Gotham, because they would have taken them both out right there. But he fucking saved your ass. And the other thing with Vic, too, I feel like I didn't care for his character arc so much this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I like the idea of, oh, I'm going to take this kid under my wing. <laughs> Because he's the penguin, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and have this. I mean, I I, lo- I in- really enjoyed his his mini backstory opening scene, and mm-hmm. you see the, like the all the, the waves come yeah. in and like kill his family and stuff. I I like that, um, but it just kind of was just I'm the audience. Like, what's going on here, guy? You know, mm-hmm. I'm here for the exposition, and then oh, like how am I going to rise through the through the ranks? You know, it just kind of. Penguin trusted him immediately. It's not like anyone else in the gang ever questioned Vic being around. And maybe you don't question the boss because he's the yeah. boss, and that's fine. But then it's like you have his whole arc with, uh, like episode where he's dealing with a guy from his past. Squid. Squid. Yeah, I was going to say spider. I was like, I know it's not spider. <laughs> uh, and then you have him kill him, which is like, okay, the sweet innocent kid is willing to kill. Mm-hmm. Um, How is this going to affect him? And then it's just kind of just like, hey, kid. You're all right. And yep. then like, don't talk about it. It doesn't yeah. come up. It's never like a plot point of like, oh, the cops looking in this murder. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it's like, oh, because the Narrows or wherever they fucking live is all just trash. <laughs> and it's like, well, the, the cops aren't going to look into any dead body. Or mm-hmm. it's like, Fine, I guess. But I just feel like I never really got enough from Vic. And I can't tell if he's actually like a good, I mean, from an acting standpoint. He's fine. Yeah. But I was never just like, man, he's like really eating up this scene or really steals this moment or anything like that. Like, he's just a good, he's like cute character to have around. Sure. But like, as a character, there was nothing I was really like grasping onto. Yeah, he, did, he didn't get the big scenes to chew the scenery like like Penguin and Sophia do. Um, so, no, I think that's a an okay uh, complaint. Yeah. Um, and I have one final complaint about the finale, and it's a small thing that doesn't ultimately matter. Is but it I the back signal? Because I really didn't like that. No, I didn't care about the back right. signal. Uh, well, I'll say, to that end scene, I did like seeing him in sort of like... His penguin his garb? His penguin yeah. garb, yeah. I did like seeing that. Uh, but then, like, having your prostitute girlfriend dress up like your mother just to make you feel good about all the bad things you did? Yeah. Such a fucked up dude. <laughs> like, what a bad guy. Yeah. Anywho, your complaint. Anywho, my my major only complaint from from the finale, other than like other stuff I put in, uh, is I don't dislike that he didn't kill um, Sophia, Sophia. Yeah. because like oh her sending her to hell would be sending her back to Arkham, or. Oh. Sending her to Arkham would be like sending her back to hell. Yeah, yeah. What did okay. I say? You said sending her to hell would be like sending her to Arkham. Well, yeah, I'm just, I'm I guess to say it that's works. Version so, yeah, of hell. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so I. I'm cool with that. I didn't like 
that he fucking pulls a Batman. We've watched eight episodes of this motherfucker, uh-huh. like, drag his shit, oh, slither yeah, yeah. away, like, all slow. And you're expecting me to believe that she's just, like, looking out in the distance, and then somehow he, you know, disappears. She didn't hear With a movie. car, too. Yeah, with the car that they yeah. came in 30 I, yeah. feet away. Yeah. That's the only part I was like, there's, there had to be a better way to do this. Maybe. I Chalk it up to, like, she's coming to terms with being killed, and we see it for 10 seconds, but maybe it was longer, and it's her just like really. I, I don't know. It's, sure, it's, it's it's like I said, it's a minor gripe. It's fine, but the it had to have it. What you want the cops to pull up and and the penguin just like gives them a thumbs <laughs> up. And, yeah, <laughs> it, it, they, no. they just had to do that's it that one way. way they could have done it. I like, guess yeah, that's not. I don't know. I just I just thought it was silly. Okay. Uh, but like I said, from a filmmaking standpoint, from a viewer's, it's fine. Uh, but I just thought it was dumb. Anyway. Uh, um, so things I learned today was Sophia's doctor was originally Jonathan Crane, and he was supposed to be the Scarecrow, oh, but they okay. changed it last second. And even in his office, you can see, like, the um, syringe glove and a mask on his desk. I don't know why they changed it. It makes perfect sense. That's another. Th- okay. Now that we're talking about it. Okay. Thank you. That's another thing I didn't like about this season. It's like you had this character who seemed like he was going to be a thing. Yeah. And did nothing with him. Yep. And if it's just like, well, well we're setting he, him up now in case there's no, a season he, two. He he made, you know, he got all the information out of Oz's mom. Like he was important. Yeah. But uh, I, I just feel like from like, I know that actor. He was on Sons of Anarchy. You know, it, Luke Cage, he, he has shades. A, he, <laughs> yeah, he had a connection to so uh, to Sophia. They have this like relationship. He's, he's like, I'll do anything he, for yeah, you. Yeah, he moves in as like her number one henchman as she takes over the family. It just felt like this guy is going to be some sort of deal. Like he should be a bigger character than mm-hmm. he is. Um, and maybe it's just like, well, he's here now, so we can make him bigger later. So it's like, okay, well then he should have just, I, I did he not know been. that, but he just should have been Dr. Crane. He should have been Scarecrow, um, yeah. But then I guess I could see that being, well, now we're going to wait for him to betray her and then he's a thing. Or like, we can't have a famous villain outshadowing our main character. So maybe that was the thing. I Or I if they're not going to plan to use Scarecrow in a future movie, like, oh, are people just going to be pissed off that we just, we, oh, look, it's Scarecrow, wink, 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 and but don't, not do anything with her. Or or does not do anything with yeah, it, yeah, okay. you know? Um, yeah. So I didn't care for that I, character. Yeah, I like every time I see that guy's face, he's just like, "Ooh, I want to punch you in the face." He's just smarmy. Yeah. I don't like that guy. Because they have established like why he seemed to care about her. I think he just thought all. she just, was he's hot. Just a, he's just a nut. Yeah, and like, oh no, I can see she's not one of these crazy people, and I feel bad for her. And maybe if I'm nice enough, I, if I put in enough good guy points, I'll get to bang her. Uh, so let's. I want to talk about some names. Okay. One squid. Uh, there was already a character in Batman the anime series, and they Sid the Squid. Everybody thought he killed Batman, and they were like, "Oh, Sid, what a tough guy!" And uh, like the Joker was going after him, like this this little wiener. He killed Batman. I don't think so. I think they could have just picked another name. But the the biggest issue is Vic. Of all the names they they can pick, don't name this guy Victor. We have a Victor Zaz and a Victor Freeze mm-hmm. already. And so you're making up this brand new character? Call him Adam. Call him Jebediah. I don't care, but we already have two. It's like Harvey Dent and Harvey Bullock. We don't why do we have two Harveys? It's 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 stupid. Did nobody think of it before? Bad idea. But one fun little Easter egg that I've seen no one talk about is you know when in Sophia's flashback episode there's a news reporter talking to her mm-hmm. and then her dad kills the reporter and blames it on her mm-hmm. that character's name is Summer Gleason and I was like that sounds very familiar she is the news reporter on Batman the animated series oh, there you go it's simple enough like not really shown up in any other things I don't even think she's in the comics but if you google Summer Gleason it's the animated uh, series character. So I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So you do know the characters in this world. Why'd you name him Victor? <laughs> uh, anything else about the penguin? No, uh, B minus. I enjoyed you're, my time. You're, you're dumb as I shit. I think it's overrated. No, fuck uh, you. Sorry. No. 
one of the best of the year, and uh, I'm I'm sure it will win plenty of things. If he does not win for acting, and they don't win for makeup, it's crazy. You, he disappears in that. That makeup sure. is so flawless. It moves around like real skin. It's it's absolutely it's amazing. Thing I will not say is bad is these two <laughs> actors are great in this show. So I talked a little bit about Nora last week. Just. 30 seconds, I think I talked about. Um, yeah, literally two minutes. Talk two minutes for it. Uh, and it came a little closer. You didn't have to do any sort of traveling. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie, but I think I'm a little disappointed because it, this was hyped up so much for mm -hmm. me. Like, every fucking horror movie this year has been hyped up. This has been said as, you know, the most shoe in for an Oscar nomination mm -hmm. for acting and picture, um, which I believe it, it will go up for that. I, and I can see her winning for, for acting. Um, but as a movie, it, as a whole, I was wanting a little bit more. Mm -hmm. What'd you feel? Uh, I, th I'm going to guess I liked it more than you maybe. Uh, but at the same time, I do think there is something missing here. Um, because definitely this movie took turns and stuff that I didn't expect to, uh, to see. I didn't know too, like the trailer doesn't reveal a, a whole lot, but you're made to think that, oh, there's some sort of like crime element to this. Yeah. And there's really not. Cause we don't know anything about his family. Yeah. We just know they're very wealthy. They're wealthy Russians. Yeah. Uh, and his, like the... There, there's goons who are yeah. like break into his and house. And you think if you have goons, you're part of the mob or something. But when it cuts to like, uh, what's it, what was his name? Toros. Toros. Yeah, is the is the priest. Yeah, and, and like I just assumed that was his dad or something. Like, oh, that's a good switch on it. That they are a hyper religious family, and he's sowing his oats and doing all this crazy stuff with this stripper because he was raised in such a pure family and that wasn't it and like oh okay so then what are they we just don't know. famous actors just, diplomats we have no idea they could just have a bunch of car dealerships yeah, for all we know super wealthy russian yeah business people for yep. all we know um and like yeah the guys who break in are like willing to like they're in the crime gray area like they mm -hmm. don't want to hurt anybody they yeah. don't want to like break any laws even though they they're not going to shoot you in the back of the yeah, head they, and dump you in the river yeah but they'll fuck up your candy store <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do what they have to to just sort of they're basically just handlers yeah for this uh for this man child but anyway for the, anyone who hasn't seen the movie uh anora is a stripper she meets uh vanya a, vanya who is this young man who meets uh who they meet at the strip club He's Russian. She knows Russian because her grandmother spoke in Russian. And so they hit it off. They hook up a couple times. They decide to get married. And then hilarity ensues. Mm -hmm. um, so I think my problem with this movie is it kind of breaks into three acts. Um, where the first act, so the first like hour of the movie is this sort of, I was really into it. Because it was this fun, fast-paced, like, fantasy, like... Mm -hmm. uh, Taking trips to Vegas. Story is just like... I. I like, I don't know if it's necessarily every girl's dream, but it's just, oh, you you find this guy, and he's great, and he's rich, and he takes you on this whirlwind adventure of just, you know, you meet his friends, and uh, you have a good time with each other, and you go to Vegas, and he spends all this money on you and buys you clothes, and, you know, it's all, like, all that was, like, really fun to see. I'm like, man, they really, I haven't, the only is Sean Parker, um, Sean Baker, sorry, Sean Parker's, uh, Social network. Uh, social network, yeah. yeah. Sean Baker film is Tangerine, although I want to see his other work. Like, mm -hmm. I want to see Red Rocket and uh, Florida, Florida Project. Project. It just hasn't crossed my mm -hmm. desk yet. Um, but I was like, man, he like for a guy who's pretty much just made like sort of these low budget um, indie films, of, mostly about like sex work, like this movie, they're like, oh, they spent money on this. Yeah. Like, it looks great. Um, and all these sequences are very fun. And then it becomes the next. 45 minutes of just, oh, we're going to drive around the city looking for him. And I think this mm -hmm. is where the movie like really slows down. Yeah. And I think it be kind of, kind of becomes a comedy here. Yeah. There were like three stooges just kind of like bumbling around each other. But like, I really liked them. Yeah. Uh, I liked the goons. I liked Toros as kind of the, the boss of the whole situation, but he's like kind of an idiot too. Mm -hmm. um, and like, 
their whole dynamic I thought was kind of fun and just being like, this whole thing is just absurd that we have to do this. Um, but I also think there's some really well put together shots in this section too. Mm -hmm. um, just like when they're walking on the pier and you see the um, big roller coaster in the background, mm, like yeah. I love that shot. Um, there's a lot of like tra uh, tracking shots when they're in groups that I think look really good together. Um, and then the last half hour is just this like real bummer of a drama of this girl who's like trying to keep her marriage together from this mm -hmm. guy who's like totally fucking sucks and then you meet his family and they totally fucking suck and i was just waiting for it to be like any famous actress or yeah something to pop up just nope. like two russian people i've never seen before and that's his thing like he really casts outside yeah. hollywood i've never seen anyone in this movie before other than her mm -hmm. um, mikey madison mikey madison yeah uh and i only know her from scream mm -hmm. five i i know her from uh once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She's the one who gets the oh, yeah, the, the, in the oh, face. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, does she also, like, on the fireplace, does she get her face? I don't remember. That okay. might be her, too. Okay. Um, yeah. Either way, she was, she was playing two people. little psychos before. Two little psychos, yeah. Um, but, yeah, in the last half hour, it was just, like, real sad. Like, yeah. it's not funny anymore. Mm -mm. It's not fun. It's, it's, this movie is a roller coaster of kind of emotions. And yeah. So it kind of... And it's, but it's her journey. So like you mm -hmm. really get it all through her. Uh, I think she's great. I think this movie looks beautiful. Um, I, you know, I think it's, uh, it de it's definitely funny. It's definitely dramatic. I, you know, it has all the makings of an Oscar movie, but is it one of those things where I'm just like, you have to see it yeah. or I want to watch it again. I think I could watch it again. It'd be totally sure. Cool. Yeah. Um, because I think there's enough here, but I wouldn't say, like, I'm ready to just jump right back in. Because mm -hmm. I think I'll get more out of the second viewing. Yeah. Um, but Don't I, suggest it to mom. You know? Yeah. <laughs> there is so much nudity in this. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of the rare movies where I'm just like, the nudity, I think, is necessary yeah. and works. It's sure. Not, but it never feels like overly gross yeah. or this is the boob shot for you guys yeah. you know i think it's all it's in service of the character, of the and, character the story. and the story yeah um like even when you go and you're traveling through the strip clubs like it never feels gross even though strip clubs are kind of gross yeah, yeah. uh kind of <laughs> yeah um but and like the movie typically when you see these things it's always uh like as this aura of like sleazy and like it could look down on the women, but like it presents all of them as like real people mm -hmm. um, who like may not have classy moments, but it's just like it, it all feels genuine. It never feels, I think, um, like oh, this is this is the movie scene. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like this could really happen in a realistic way of just like oh, we're this is a crime story, but it's not you know Goodfellas or whatever. It's just like the lowest stakes. Yeah. thing you could do and i really enjoyed this movie i'd say high b plus <laughs> <laughs> you know i gotta throw in my high because i don't think it's quite an a yeah i want to give it an a minus because i think there's something here and it makes me excited to see uh sean baker's other work um and like and i think i look forward to seeing what he does next especially if he gets a bunch of like oscar nominations and all that stuff um but yeah do you think she genuinely cared for him and genuinely wanted to stay married? Or was it just because she knew he, she would be taken care of? I think like early on in the movie when they're first hanging out and she's kind of cuddled up with him and he's playing video games, it never really felt like there was much uh, like they had stuff in common or there were... There, I was, or you were waiting for that one scene where, you know, they bond over, they bond something. over a thing or, uh, they're, they're walking out and somebody, somebody's getting like a lady's purse getting stolen and he like stops the, the guy from stealing the purse yeah. and goes back. Oh, it's like, Oh, this guy really is sweet. Yeah. It was just kind of like once, you know, it was, Hey, let's get, cause the week was ending and I had such a great week. Hey, let's get married. And then you can have all this money all the time. It, I think, it was mostly the money, mm -hmm. but I think I could see she'd be so desperate for like love or connection or whatever. That's like, oh, maybe I do love him. Mm -hmm. um, Even it, if she she's trying to convince herself, like she yeah. probably really doesn't like because that I think 
the movie says she does love him, but maybe subconsciously it's like she doesn't realize that. No, you don't. Because yeah. like when you she, just love what he can do. Yeah. For when you the know. other characters show up and they're just like, you don't love him. You mm-hmm. don't love him. You're going to get this annulled. Like you don't love him. This is yeah. this is absurd. Like you, you know nothing about this mm-hmm. guy. Like they're all correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think in her mind, she does. But in reality, deep down in her soul, she knows that like mm. this isn't real. And when you get to the end, like you have this this nice person who's just been nothing but nice. My and she's, favorite character in this yeah, movie. He's so good. Good old Igor. Uh, and she's just as like shitting on him the whole time. Because like all she's ever known when, when being a stripper is just like this is a transactional thing. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's trying to be nice f- to you is trying to get something out of you. And so she's just incredibly mean to him <laughs> the whole time. But then in the very last scene, just like jumps him and and has sex with him because she doesn't know anything else of mm-hmm. how to say like thank you um and then when he tries to kiss her that's a very big no no stripper thing you, there's no kissing yeah. and so she kind of like freaks out and realizes like oh is this like a transactional thing that I'm used to or am I genuinely having some sort of feelings for you? And, and this is like crossing all my wires and that's why she starts breaking down. Yeah. So it's also, really nice. And been awake for like 40. Sure. Hours. Yeah. No, no, she, they went to sleep the night before. Remember she tossed them the, the blanket and then they go to the, and then they go to the bank. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was a very emotional. She had to fly to Vegas and all this yeah, stuff. What a so. crazy like two days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, uh, it's a good movie. Yeah. I, I'm glad it's getting attention. It's, it's probably one of the better films I've seen this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, I mean, would I say it, it'll probably make my top 10, but what I say, but you only, you've only seen 10 movies this year. So no, I've, I think I've seen 20. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You 22. counted last week. Yeah. I can't remember what the number. I think I was, it was like 26 I, or I think it was 36. 20, no, I was up to 20. Two, because hmm. I needed to see two more movies to like break even. Oh, that's right, pass. that's right. Yeah, and now I've seen those two, so okay. now I broke even for the year. So anything after that is just uh, you're banking. I'm banking. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, uh, you want to move on to our main topic, the most important movie of the year. Let's do it. All right, redone, starring <laughs> The Rock and Chris <laughs> Evans and Lucy Liu and J.K. Simmons, directed by I don't know some guy. Uh, I didn't look it up to see if this person did anything um because it really doesn't matter there's there's not a lot of like you you know you could always tell when it's a david fincher movie Mm -hmm. you know this could have been done by any person who's ever made a netflix movie uh it's it's pretty pretty basic uh but it is the the story of santa claus got kidnapped and and you gotta you know even though you're a secret society uh keeping all these like mythological creatures uh out of the public you need the help of you know a normal human being to track down santa claus um and then it's the rock and it's chris evans and they go on a little road trip to stop some evil witch um this movie isn't the worst thing i've seen this year but it's not very good i didn't care about it it's it's pretty dull it's not very funny and it's way too long, but I don't know. I'd give it like a C minus. It's fine. You know, I'm, I'm sure plenty of kids will enjoy this. People who just love the rock will enjoy this, uh, on, on the, the weekly planet. They are talking about, there's so many men in black esque mm-hmm. movies where it's men in black with this, like RIPD is men in black, but instead of aliens, it's ghosts. So this is just men in black, but with holiday characters instead of aliens. And there's just that sort of formula and which is fine. But when you start seeing things like the headless horseman in, in Krampus and you go, Ooh, other things besides Christmas, I want to see more of that. And you don't, it's like, eh, it's kind of missed opportunity. Maybe they're saving it for a red one too. Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah, would you just call this red two? I guess you have to. No, but like red one is Santa's like name. Yeah, but no. So you, you call, call it red it... two because red one is retiring. So now red two is the one taking up the mantle. Oh, see, I don't think they would even do any Christmas stuff anymore. Or, or it wouldn't or be red focused. Two is like they have a baby. Even oh. though they're like old. See, I figured it would be cl- closer to like that that Rise of the Guardians movie where like 
you know, the Easter bunny is coming to visit there. It's the, the every millennia you bring all the, the holiday people together to have a council, like the council of gods and Thor love and thunder. Mm -hmm. And they have to hash out like whatever. It, it wouldn't be like a Christmas story. It would be expanding the world. So I don't think you could call it red two. It'd be like red one, happy holidays you know it would, it would just yeah. be red one and then a tagline but anywho we're, we're like already yeah. pitching sequels to this <laughs> steve what did you think of this movie uh i hate this movie yeah this movie is it's totally bad. fine movie it, to hate yeah i mean is it the worst thing i've seen this year no 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 but it's at the bottom uh it's near the bottom because i mean look we watched it we were gonna watch it regardless because yeah. it's got the evans yeah. and the evans probably the best part of the movie i don't i don't wise. even know i mean jk simmons, simmons is, is probably the best part yeah of i those. mean simmons is great no matter no matter what but he has such little screen time i can't yeah. really like give it to him yeah and santa is just kind of such a simple role that being said jk simmons is fucking cut in yeah this movie. jesus yeah. christ ever since he became gordon commissioner gordon he's just been working out nonstop. i mean he looked he looked great in uh whiplash yeah uh but he's I'd fuck that Santa. Yeah. Anyway. I, I think if J.K. Simmons wasn't buff, I don't think they'd have any of those exercise scenes no, in the movie. Probably not. It would just be him like, like, I mean, oh. I assume that was just the Rock's gym that they brought in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, that was actually just the Rock's set. And mm -hmm. they just decided, like, hey, Rocky, can we film in here? Uh, but anywho, The Rock is bad in this. Uh, Lucy so Liu is atrocious in this. And I feel so really I got bad. I got so excited to see Lucy Liu because like I haven't seen Lucy Liu in forever. I, yeah. I want to see Lucy Liu in a bunch of shit. Um but then she like is she's just awful. Bad line like, delivery. Not trying in the slightest. No. And I've never been like a huge Lucy Liu fan, but I, I still root for her just because like she's a fucking legend. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want her to do I want her she's to be in, she. Yeah, I want her to be in good stuff. Um that being said, the trailer for presents, what do you think of that? Presents? I well, it was I think one of the last trailers uh that was on my showing of Red One. Uh -huh. But it's like a haunted house movie with starring Lucy Liu. Um but like the whole entire movie is shot like you're the ghost. So oh. it's from at least that's what I gather. Nah, that did not play before mine. Oh. We'll put off the trailer. All right. I mean, the trailer pause is like the most horrifying thing you'll see this year. Of course. Uh, okay. But it it's just an interesting, it's a, a Soderbergh movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll check it out later. Anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah. But and, embarrassed uh, for her. And Nick Kroll's scene uh, oh. is just so cringy. And you and I love Nick Kroll. Love that guy. And it's him just Nick Krollin' it up. Yep. But it just... It just felt icky to watch. Yep. Uh, you, you don't need to be that close to his face <laughs> yeah. for any reason. Uh, and then uh, Kieran Shipka, I guess, is a fine sure. villain. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to show the CGI in this movie. And a lot of the CGI is bad, but sure. whatever. It's fine. It's a, You I, can't I, complain I, about I, CGI these days. I don't care. I don't care so much about that uh, in this. Um, but, like, it's an action. It totally... This, this movie's all over the place because it's trying to be, you know, your PG-13 Men in Black style movie, but it also wants to be a kid's movie because it's a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. and, but they want to say shit but, so bad. But, yeah, so they're dropping shit and asshole and stuff. Uh -huh. But then it's also, even though it's for kids, it's also an action movie. Mm -hmm. But, like, none of the action's all that good. Like, the no. only, like, I think decent action scene is the snowman fight scene. Sure. Uh, yeah, him chasing the snow cat, like, jumping from roof to yeah, roof. just... Yeah. I didn't care for that opening action sequence. Uh, and then the final action sequence was just like so fast. And, you know, there wasn't like a ton of henchmen to really yeah. fight or anything like that. It just kind of, there's five seconds of that and then jump to like, oh, we're on the race, on the platform, bridge, yeah. on the bridge, and have this big giant kaiju witch fight thing, which like wasn't all that interesting. And then he had like, the Ant-Man technology bit, which yeah. like, could be kind of fun, but it was really just like, oh, it'd, wouldn't it be funny if The Rock was super small? Yeah. Uh, and see, like, I I was a little confused. Like, at first, okay, they're called the ELF, whatever the hell. This movie's full of acronyms. They had a ton yeah. of acronyms. But so, but they never say like, like, oh yeah, we are, the, they may say we're the elves because they're the helpers, but you don't really see little people. You see little monster things, but they don't call them elves. And so for a bit, I thought, well, are all the elves 
small and they just have this technology to make him big. And the rock is a real little guy. And then he, they just big him up when he, he needs to be, but they, they don't go into that at all. They just have shrinking technology because Santa needs to use it to do his present delivery. Yeah. You have all these mythological creatures and then you have people who just look human. Yeah. But aren't human. Yeah. He even says like, like, do I look like a human? Like, Cause yeah. the rock says like, I'm, 500 plus years old or whatever. Mm -hmm. So here's Santa and I assume they're from the same race. Sure. Of whatever ethereal beings they are. But he, the the rock doesn't really have powers. They have technology. Technology. I mean, maybe he's got a little bit of super strength. I don't recall how that works. No. Uh, but that, well, no, he has to because they're lifting up crazy amounts of weight. I doesn't guess, matter. yeah. Um, but like Santa... Is he magic? Because like uh, the opening scene of this movie is just like, Santa's delivering all these presents in one night. How's that possible? And his reindeer can travel at like light speed, mm -hmm. but it's still like him like rappelling Drop. down yeah. and going to each house and yes. doing all that stuff. Which like okay, you can knock out a lot of houses in twenty four hours, but you're gonna get one, one two block, one town. Yeah, you're gonna per get night. one town. I don't so care like, what because technology. they never say like oh we stopped time. Yeah, we, and that's that, there's, that's there's more because there's they do a lot of fun stuff with the technology. Like oh my big red bag is actually like multiple like things that like pop and we have off. a helicarrier that like yeah. re restock yeah, restocks like yeah. i thought like some of the technology stuff i think oh this is kind of fun but it doesn't make sense like so is he magic or is it technology is it a mix of both and none of it's really explained and once again it doesn't really matter no but if you're gonna go this route where it's like oh we've progressed over the years and like uh we've advanced to now we have like technology to help us do it. it's like well you were I mean, obviously, 500 years ago, you were hitting far less houses, mm -hmm. but you, you still couldn't do it in one night no. then. So, like, how the fuck are you doing yeah. this unless you stop time I, and you are magic? I wish Santa Claus was just an American thing. Like, that, the, the legend of Santa Claus never really took off in any other country. Then you could say Santa Claus visits every house in America in one night. Okay, I can maybe buy that, but not the entire world. And we don't even see him go to other worlds. He seems like just kind of stay in America. Uh, we don't see him visiting Africa or anything like well, that. Well, it's always a montage of like you see him going past the Eiffel Tower. You yeah. see him going past uh, the Taj Mahal or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but, you know, once again, it, it's The fine. only way Santa Claus would work is he's an ethereal being that he breaks down into, into his molecules. And they spread across the entire world. And every molecule goes into in an individual home of a true believer of Santa or a house that practices uh, Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then those molecules open up a portal and every elf just pushes the presents through that portal. And then they close up and all the molecules come back together and he reforms as Santa. Mm -hmm. It's the only way it really could work. Yeah. See, and that's something weird and different. Sure. But it's always just, no, we got crazy technology to uh, get to every house. Like, what was that CG um, Santa Claus movie where Santa Claus had, like, a dumbass son? Like, it wasn't Fred Claus. That's the the brother. We had a dumbass son. I don't know if it was his son. Oh, uh, the, the Bill Hader one? I, no, no, no. It was computer animated. He's like a skinny, skinny dude, and Santa Claus is like, you'll never be able to take over for me, oh, and they got to come. Was it just called Claus? I think so. It wasn't that Netflix movie. It was in theaters at least 10 years ago. I don't know. But it's like, Whatever. they don't do anything new with this that hasn't been done in other Santa Claus movies, and if you're going to pose... Well, every the, year you make a Santa Claus movie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, If you're going to like pose these questions of like, how does Santa Claus do it? And then you just go, real fast? It, that's not a good enough answer for yeah. me. Yeah, they really should just go like never show Santa delivering presents. Yeah, or if you do, show him deliver like one. No, but whenever they show one, it's always like he comes down the chimney, dusts himself off, eats a cookie, drinks some milk, straightens up the stockings. It's like let's go, fucker. You yeah, can't. but you don't know. I'm I'm saying oh. like you don't know how it, you don't see him like be in the sleigh. You don't see him. Like, go down the chimney. This could be a time stop. It could be any number. It of should things. be a time stopping thing. But, I mean, it would have to be. That's why he has to take the whole year off because, or like, like he, doing that. Or, like you said, he just uh, splits himself <laughs> into molecules. Just, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm done in 30 minutes because I yeah. just hit all the houses at the yeah. same time. Um, he just travels with the, the rotation of the earth. It can't be in the sunlight. Otherwise, he burns up like a vampire. <laughs> and then that's how he does oh, it. Oh, Vampire Santa. Vampire Santa. I, I watched that movie. Uh, 
Sandpire. No, go on. Uh, I forget where I was going with Santa that. Fangs instead of Santa Claus. Oh, Santa that's not bad. F- okay. That's not bad. Uh, you have... So let's take a look at The Rock's character arc and Chris Evans' character arc. Okay. We're introduced... With Chris Evans, first off, their names are such like, uh, I need to f- write a cool name. Like, it's uh, a writer's first crack at coming up with cool action names. Yeah. Jack O'Malley and Callum Drift. It's yeah. Like, yep. Fuck these names. Mm-hmm. I, I hate their names. Um, but we're introduced to Chris Evans' character. Uh, he's a douchebag as a kid. Grows up. He's a douchebag who is like a the best hacker in the world. Yeah. Uh, and even says as a kid, like, I could find anything and anyone. And then they make a joke except about your dad. except your dad. And like, what do you mean you could find anyone? You're eight. Like, have you been finding people? How, why are you making this claim? Yeah. Uh, but OK, fine. You know, I, I love a good douchebag Chris Evans. Sure. Good douchebag Chris Evans yeah. is fun, you know, especially seeing him go from Captain America to this and whatever. But he's played douchebags before. Anyway. Um, his whole thing is like connecting with his son mm-hmm. uh, in this movie, but like it did nothing for me and it never really felt particularly earned. Like you could tell that he kind of liked his son and then, uh, but it never really seemed like he, he wasn't learning lessons. He yeah. was just being revealed the truth of Santa Claus. Yeah. It was just like, Oh, the, I figured out that, magic exists and there's people bigger than me so i guess i'll go be a good i'll try and be a good dad now and it seems like, like he'll only be a, he was only trying to be a good dad once his son was captured like oh now it directly involves me now i will change as a person yeah i, I needed a little bit more for him to do um a little bit more back and forth of like what his struggles are because it never like so he he just grows up, gets this chick pregnant, and it seems like and he's always struggling with money because he's got like a gambling debt. But mm-hmm. he's making like, if you're the best hack in the world, I get yeah, you can still have gambling debt, I guess. But you should if you can find fucking Santa Claus, yeah. can't you just like hack a bank? Yeah, yeah. you should never have money problems ever. I know. Uh, it seemed it seemed silly to me, uh, and then The Rock. This character arc is, oh, I just, ne- I, I can't see the magic in a child's eyes anymore. And there should have been stuff with him throughout the movie of just like, you know, maybe glimmers of hope throughout. But really, it was just at the pretty much the last second of the movie, he yeah. sees a young Chris Evans talking to his, the, the son and just like, oh, I see the magic in the yeah. child's eyes again. Like, I'll stay on as your head of security. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It just none of that emotional stuff worked for me. And nope. It's like in a movie that, you know, has to have a heart because it's Christmas time and it's about, you know, you can be this big action movie but still have joy. Uh, it, it failed across the board on pretty much every aspect. Yeah. Uh, like all this, this whole movie was just like uninspired and like on a. I just didn't care about any of it. Um, and and the the rock is so bad he brings Chris Evans down. Like yeah. Chris Evans is not able to sell any of these jokes, and most of his dialogue is just kind of repeating the crazy stuff that's said to him. You know, like in the trailer, he goes like a level two naughty lister. You know, it's, it's just they say something to him like, "Oh, we're part of the ELF." The ELF. It's like that's all he had was just yeah. repeat back it in in a silly voice, and that's the joke. And I think the the problem with this is The Rock sucks. We all know he sucks. Stop casting men's stuff. This is the movie where he's peeing in bottles and mm-hmm. showing up eight hours late. That's why it costs like an extra $50 million to make this movie because he kept putting them behind schedule. Fuck The Rock. Studios, he's not a draw. You can see from the box office, nobody's going to see the movies just because it's him. It's not 10 years ago. I mean, it's his production company who made it, so that's why he's casting it. <laughs> so. Well, I hope he's taking a huge fucking pay cut to get this done because he's he sucks. He's he's not good. So you need if you need a big buff guy who can sell the comedy, you know, it's pretty obvious to just say Chris Hemsworth. OK, you just you take someone like that. You put Chris Hemsworth in the rock role and then you like because this feels like Chris Evans was supposed to be Ryan Reynolds and because oh, sure. Ryan Reynolds is not funny, but he can say something unfunny 
in a wacky way that makes your brain think he's mm -hmm. saying a joke when it's actually not a joke. And it really feels like this was for him. But I could see after doing Red Notice being like, I ain't working with that fucking guy. So hire someone else. So but I don't think you want to do Chris Evans and uh, Chris Hemsworth. So my idea was like, take out Chris Evans and put in someone like John Mulaney. And have a John uh, Mulaney, Chris Hemsworth duo. I think that would be fun. I'd see John Mulaney. And, and yeah, I don't think John Mulaney would do this. But hey, no. if Nick Kroll is willing to to sell his soul, why why not? <laughs> and then, you know, do it together. Yeah, I. Uh, the only part where I was just like, oh, this is kind of fun. Like, I like the idea of Krampus being an adopted brother sure. of yeah. Santa Claus. And I like the idea of Krampus is the one who invented the naughty list. Yep. Like and that. It's like his thing is, oh, well, these children behave poorly. I need to punish them. And Santa's like, I'm a totally against punish. You know what? Give me that fucking movie. Yeah. I feel like that's way more interesting because then, the, then there's your emotional core is mm -hmm. like the bond between brothers and their shared and their both their mission is to like make the world a better place. Uh, but they just go about it different ways, and that's kind of like what shatters them. It's like, how do you bring them back together? Mm -hmm. Like that all could work in an interesting, yeah. in, a, in an interesting way. Um, it, but it was years ago when we when we saw a Violent Night, and we had that whole we created a whole backstory mm -hmm. for him. You could work in that Krampus brother stuff into that as well. That's Violent Night too. There that I that's what I want. I don't I don't need to see modern day Christmas stuff. How does Santa do it? He's magic, whatever. Like, he should just be, like, blinking it all into existence, you know? It doesn't make any sense for the, the production of what toys are. It makes sense back in the day when it was, you know, a duck with wheels that you pull behind you, and that was a toy, you yeah. know? But, like, with, what was it, like, Vampire Assassin 4 or something? Like, yeah, yeah. he can't make that stuff. So, like, modern-day Santa just doesn't work. So, if, if any more Santa movies... Yeah, taking it back to the beginning, the origins of of how he got this power. Did he come from space? Things like that. Um, I'm 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 over it. Yeah, but I think like you know, t bringing up Violent Night, uh, like if you're gonna do an action movie set at Christmas, like Violent Night is a like that is a movie we enjoyed because it's not. It wasn't about how Santa delivers his presents. No. It wasn't about Santa's origin or explained his magic. It was just kind of like, oh, we Santa Claus is here and he's killing everybody <laughs> and just like the the story didn't really matter even though you and i you know kind of wanted a little bit more yeah. that being said it was a fun enjoyable movie that was just an action movie that involved yep. santa and here's an action movie set at christmas time that doesn't really involve santa and it's just about his santa's bodyguard and some dude going on a wacky and, and adventure a, and a witch trying to punish the people with these magic snow globes Terrible villain. Yeah. I, I, I did not care for this being the, the driving force. Like, I like the idea we're kidnapping Santa to ruin Christmas. And it will show you that humanity so bad and Krampus could go fuck up humanity or something. But to like, I'm going to capture every person on the planet and put them in a snow globe and do what? Like, then the world would have had like 1% of the population left on it. And then, and then what do you do? I don't understand her her phase two you know yeah. step one steal the people step two step three profit what is the step <laughs> two and you know in the beginning when uh the rock was going you know telling santa oh i i want to quit uh i'm gonna retire because it's not the kids that bother me it's the adults mm -hmm. and stuff it's like well i understand that chris evans is your adult uh that changes and so you can you can see the magic again at the end or whatever, but that should have been a bigger part. Like I don't I don't know. Can we get more interactions with the Rock and adult and see like where we have fallen? Because the movie says like oh the world's gotten worse, but never offers any real solutions to like fix yeah. it. Or there's no scene where you know the, so like the globes get out and a bunch of parents are getting like caught sure. up. There's no Nightmare Before Christmas where the presents are coming alive to yep. attack. It's yep. like, why, why isn't there like a bunch of adults who go like, oh, no, what? I realize the error of my ways or like because Santa releases this magic, it, you know, shoots joy across the world. And they're like that moment where they're going to hit their kid. And they're like, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it this time. I love you, son. Or, it's, I, it's something. Something. It's yeah. just like, oh, no, you changed one person. So now it's like, okay. I'll do Christmas again. The world isn't that bad. I, 
the only reason this guy changed is because you took him on a 24-hour magical adventure that no yeah. human has ever been yeah. on. This guy saw living snowmen, you know? This guy walked through portals. The, the world saw living snowmen, and no one talked no about it. No one said anything. Yeah, you, they needed a, a shot to a TV where they go like, like living snowmen or crazed men dressed up in crazy costumes. Or you just have uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones cameo in red suits <laughs> and they just blast them with Sure, them, yeah. You know. And yeah, they the work Men with... in red are coming. Oh. oh. <sighs> yeah, this movie is garbage. Uh, I won't be, I don't know if it's in my bottom three, but I won't be surprised if it's in my bottom three or bottom five or whatever the fucking list is. We make ten. it in the year. Oh, it's 10. Or at least I do 10, whether you actually do 10. I might not do 10 because if it's a full 10, it's like, here's five movies that I think are okay. Mm-hmm. And then here's five that are, or three that are like bad. And then here's yeah. two that are just horrendous. Regardless of what, how many it is, just the worst of the worst. If something isn't, you know, deemed that bad leave it off the list okay all right all right that's enough of that right i don't think i have anything else to say this uh i'm gonna give this uh i don't think it's an f but it's a d yeah d or d minus okay yeah i think that's fair yeah just because it would have been an f but it's got the evans it's yeah it it gets a little more sauce because of that all right uh next week big week gladiator 2 and wicked now, I'm assuming you're going to see Wicked. I'm going to see, I'm going to attempt to see both at some point. Um, my wife wants to see both. Okay. Um, I kind of want to see Gladiator more because I feel yeah, like- I want to see Gladiator. I mean, actually, I don't want to see Gladiator. I don't give a shit. But of the two, Gladiator is the one I want to see. Okay. I am not going to see Wicked okay. unless, for sure, you are seeing it and you think we have to do it on the podcast. No, I don't think Wicked's going to be bad enough to where it's like, oh, we have to talk about it. I think we'll go, it's fine. And then I'll go, I liked it, but um, whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. I think chances are, good or bad, we'll have a lot to say about Gladiator 2. Probably. Um, Okay, good, because I don't want to see Wicked. It looks So I will try and convince my wife to lean Gladiator 2. Yeah, you do a double feature. You know, people were trying to do the whole... We're going to go for seven seven hours hours, at movie theater with a child. The kid will be fine. Just crack the window. (laughs) Um, They were trying to do a Barbenheimer with this, and it was like, Glicked. And like, no, stop. It doesn't work. Wittiator, Wittiator, yeah. Wikiator, yeah, it doesn't work. It's it's Barbenheimer is just it has such a nice flow to it, mm-hmm. and you're not going to get another one of those for a few years. But all right, well, next week, Gladiator Two. If you want to get in contact with us, we are at WRPL Podcast at Gmail dot com. We're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on Threads, and now Ooh. we're on Blue Sky. What the fuck is Blue Sky? <laughs> so, uh, one of the uh, creators of Twitter after uh, they sold it to Elon Musk and he was let go and he saw how bad he ran that company. He said, Oh, why don't I just make Twitter again? And it's exactly like Twitter. Um, it, but now it's for, since that is completely a cesspool of MAGA, this is, you know, a brand new fresh start. So there's a lot so of the people. blue is Democrat and blue, and blue sky. Maybe oh, okay. their logo is a little butterfly, um, instead of a bird. <laughs> uh, so it's just, a lot of people are going like, if you don't want to support Elon Musk or Trump, you get off Twitter, go to blue sky, go to threads, go to something else. So we're going to hop on the bandwagon. We no longer post on on Twitter, so that's wrplpodcast.bsky.social. Mm. I know. If you just go to Blue Sky and type in uh, WRPL, it, it will come up. Join the world. <laughs> All right. Uh, as always, I'm Ben. And I'm Steve. And keep consuming.